So this is Tabletop Simulator. I'm going to show a couple of the things you can do with it, but there's like so much that I can't fit it all into one video. So I put a whole bunch of stuff on the board while trying to explain some of it, and uh, you can see what's going on. So on the board, you can see the map that I put down was uh, the one that Kira made of the market. Uh, so you can see it's got the numbers on top, but then I tried to make it 3D by adding 3D models on top. So you can take 3D models from other Tabletop Simulator games, uh, you can download them from the Steam Workshop. You can see I've got like tons of them here. Uh, you can flip through a bunch that I already own. And then I also have specific ones that are with just figurines. So if you wanted to say, um, find Dungeons and Dragons stuff, there's a, a board that has that. And then all these bags have different parts you can, when you're loading in. Um, so you got like farm tools you can import and all you got to do is right click and press save object and then you can save it in and bring it into other board games. So I made this D&D Beyond table. This would be like a table that we could use. Uh, and then you can import assets and drop them on like this. So I got barrels, I got rocks, I got wagons, trees. Um, I don't, I didn't have any, I only had these, this tent model. So I put some buildings in, in its place. Uh, you can put treasure chests in so you can actually physically hide the treasure chests on the map. And then you can also drop things that are like custom objects. So over here you can see like you can build custom rooms. Um, I got a boat. Um, you can add like ambiance things like candles. Uh, you can have all these things that you can drag objects out of. So you can see right here there's a house. This bag is just filled with different models of houses. Uh, you can add these two, which is nice. Um, you can add windmills. You can add... Uh, enemy characters, so these ones are actually animated, like that's a chimera, um, that's a destroyer, I think it's called, um, that's a minotaur, uh, you got spiders, I am Groot, um, some of them have animations, so like, that could be Bruno right there, with the two-handed axe swinging it, uh, you can, I got some rum, and, uh, yeah, there's a, so you can import all these figurines, you can shrink down to the board size or you can zoom out and play it like a tabletop board however you want in vr you can actually shrink yourself down onto the board so you can be your own figurine which is kind of cool and then there's other things that you can do so for instance right here i have you can uh, export your character sheet from dnd beyond which i did here so you can see franklin the turtle and uh you can import the pdf into the game so instead of having the uh game open or instead of having dnd beyond open uh, you can just use the character sheet like you would a regular tabletop game. Alternatively, I got a tablet over here. And you can log in to D&D Beyond on the tablet and use the tablet like you would your computer screen. So you can play it in the game or just play it on a side monitor or in a background window so you can roll that way. Uh, you can also add in objects like dice if you wanted to. So let's see, uh, components, uh, dice go metal and then you got all the d whatever so d20 you want to place like five d20s or four put it like that you can highlight them and press the r key and it rolls them all at once and you can hover over your with your mouse to see what the total roll is so that 39 is not bad not bad uh you can do things like use rulers uh to measure uh, on the game board. I don't know if this completely lines up with the board I'm currently using, but you can use that to measure how far uh, attacks are going to be, stuff like that. Uh, you can import custom game pieces. You can see right here, that's me holding my lightsabers as a game token. And again, you can use this for D&D Beyond, but you can also use it for Monopoly if you wanted to or whatever, you know, like you could use tokens, uh, custom tokens. Uh, you can set up things like I got a chair right here. We got a keg, Jack Daniels. Uh, a cannon that's got uh, animations, which is kind of cool. So there's a whole bunch of things you can do um, from within the game like this. And uh, you can just add in assets and play any sort of tabletop game. So there's a lot of options that we have doing this. Um, in terms of uh, designing the levels too, you can actually go into D&D &D, uh, levels that people have already created. Uh, so let me see here. I think there was a a tavern one that someone made um, not so it'll start off by saying like not all the assets loaded in so you can see there's a white background so someone must have deleted the background here but you can see it's like a fully 3d tavern which makes for a pretty cool setting for for like uh, playing in the game board and so you can put your pieces down um, so you want to add saved objects uh, so you want to use like 
Marshmallow Man, just drop it in. Uh, it's locked right now, so I just press the L key to unlock, and it'll drop down, and it's like a physics-based piece. <laughs> Put him upside down for now. Um, and right there, yeah, he's got a little uh, a pipe that loaded in as well uh, with smoke. I think I, I actually made that myself. Uh, and yeah, so that's how it works in flat screen. And the way that I think it would work best is like one or whoever owns this game or whoever's on Steam can uh, join the game. And you can see here, uh, change, oops, it's not change team, change color. Uh, you can pick a different spot on the board. So I can be here. And then my profile picture on Steam is right there where I'm, where I'm sitting on the board. And we can put chairs around. If people are interested, I can finish setting up this table and uh, import different maps. Um, importing the maps is very easy. So you go to components, you go to custom, custom board. You can just put it on the side here for now. And then it'll ask you which file you want to import. And then you just pick a JPEG and then bring it in. So I can just save JPEGs as Kira's uh, adding them into Discord and bring them in as game boards. And then it's just kind of like instantly in there. Um, this game is also, so uh, what I was thinking is we could have two or three people like in game, whoever adds it on Steam can be in it. And then whoever's not in Steam, in, uh, whoever doesn't have Steam, I can just uh, screen share on Discord. And you don't, don't really need to have this thing open. You can still play using D&D &D Beyond, but this would give us like a, a way of visualizing it that we wouldn't be able to do on Discord. That's more similar to how people would play on tabletops with like the map on the board and watching your pieces move so you see here we got like a team we rotate around here we got a team uh we can move our pieces around say we want to go to this thing right there we move our token over and then we're standing at this thing right here which is <laughs> the hen house um so that's how it works in 2d and then i'm going to show what it's like in vr so you can see more about how this will work as well all right, so now I'm in VR. I got my controllers. I can move around and look around. So this is what it's like sitting at the table. Um, I got my character sheet in front of me. I can pick it up and look at it. Um, I got my chair behind me. And yeah, you what you can do is uh, you, there, you press the, uh, for me, it's the B button. So it's the forward button. You can see there I'm pressing it in. Press the forward button on one hand and then you drag and that moves you around. So that's how you can kind of get around the table really easily. And then you press the grab button when you see a little uh, the icon light up like that and you can move your pieces around like that. So it works pretty similarly. It's a little bit more finicky than in flat screen. I think if I were to be organizing the setup for tabletop, like if I was helping Kira set this up, then maybe I would play on flat screen and then everyone else can play on VR. And then once I kind of get used to it, I'd play in VR. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun. You can see I'm like looking around. I can see the, the entire game board. Uh, if other people were uh, also sitting at the table here, then I'd be able to see their Steam pictures. So let me see if I can back up. So I can't see mine because it's me, but uh, I would be able to see other people's Steam pictures around and see where they're sitting. And uh, you can move around. It's almost like swimming. And you can get right up and close and look at the figurines and stuff here. And say I want to shrink down to the size of the board because people in the game, if, if other people are on flat screen and they see me, they're going to see my hands and my head floating here. So they can actually see me like moving across the board here and they can be like, what's going on? But say I want to shrink down to the size of a game piece. You hold down both of the forward buttons. So for me, it's both Bs. And then you drag your hands apart. And let me just make it a little bit smaller here. So now I'm like, so I'm standing here. It looks like my feet are on the floor. And you can see I'm like at the same scale as the game. Like I'm in the game, basically. And then I can use this uh, kind of swimming method to move myself around. So I don't even need the game piece like this guy. Oops. Highlighted by accident. Yeah, it's a little bit finicky on the controls. But uh, yeah, you can see. Hello. And I'm like the size of the game piece here. So say I want to shrink down to the size of that doorway. Come over here and then press in both buttons and shrink down a little bit further. And now it's like. Now it's like I'm walking into a real house. So you can see I'm like moving around. Can I have a quick turn? No, there's no quick turn. But yeah, you can move around like this. And then, okay, I'm going to 
scale back up. So I press both buttons and push my hands together. So now I'm like back to the tabletop and then say I scale back down over here. So you kind of get used to the controls after a while. Now this spider is like, oh, that's actually really scary. It's like, uh, it's like as big as I am. And uh, the Minotaur over there and the Chimera, like, okay, get out of my face, bud. Uh, you can see right here that they're like right up in your face. And this is this would be a really cool thing for like the people who own Steam VR to be able to kind of feel like they're in the game. You can see Groot here. It's actually a really detailed model uh, once you see it up close. And then you can grow back up to the regular size, come back over here. The tablet, I believe it works, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a, it's pretty cool. Um, if you're in Steam VR, you can press the Steam button on your right hand to bring up your desktop view. So you could just use D&D Beyond like that. Like you can just like bring up your desktop so you can see like, I, oh, I guess you can't see this right now, but I have like my desktop in front of me in Steam VR and then I can press roll and whatever and then come back into the game and like I'm right here. And uh, we got a wand right here. It actually can work. <laughs> it draws like a little line. Which is kind of cool. So yeah, this is how it would work in VR. Um, so again, you can like play like you're sitting at a table, which is like awesome. Huh. I don't know, it could do that too. And uh, it's got the menu up on the wall there. Uh, you can play around with the settings if you don't like that. And uh, if you want to shrink down to the size of a game piece, you just press the forward buttons and you move your hands apart and that'll shrink you down. And then you press one of the buttons to drag yourself along and now i'm like shorter than this guy right here you can walk inside the houses and stuff so yeah i think it'd be really cool to try this out because yeah it's a cross-platform um you don't actually need to own this game like basically one or two of us can operate the game and just kind of show it on a on a shared stream uh but it'd be really cool to be able to kind of visualize the game that we're playing this way uh, in a way that we haven't really been able to on Discord. Uh, so yeah, if you want me to continue setting this up, I can set up the rooms ahead of time. It does take a bit of time, so this took me like an hour and a half to set up this kind of thing. So it does take a bit of time, but I'm happy to do it if people are interested. And uh, I can maybe speak to Kira about like getting the maps ahead of time. I won't like cheat or anything, but I could just kind of place the maps down on the game board and add a couple models just to kind of um, start it out. So uh, yeah. Uh, let me know what you think of this. I can make it really small if I want to. <laughs> then it's like a little miniature board. A little tiny, a little tiny tile. And the other thing I forgot to mention is you can add in custom tiles in addition to like PDFs and stuff. You can make custom cards, anything like that. So I can just add in all the pictures as they're coming in off Discord into the world here. And also change the uh, surrounding background. I'm in a forest right now. You can change that up too. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it.